How's it going everybody? So if you've been following this channel for a while, you know I am absolutely obsessed and it's a passion of mine to share with y'all out there new entrepreneurial ideas. It's always been my thing. I've always enjoyed all the cool ways to make a living or make a little extra money for your family or to enjoy life. So in this video, I'm going to talk to you about something I've talked about before and this business model is ever present today in this really weird logistical environment. And that one is pallet flipping. So if you stay with this video, I'm going to show you the idea, how to network it, how to go from finding pallets to selling pallets and how to build that idea into something big that you can actually make some serious money with. So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to make a thousand dollars a day, extra money a week with the pallet business. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna keep doing these type of videos on, I, I did one on a pickup truck that was awesome. I've done it on power wash and I've done it on stump grinding. I've, I've interviewed some of the best entrepreneurs around here. I've done it on flippers and if you've watched this channel for a long time, you've seen me buy and flip real estate. You've seen me go from nothing on this channel to something very successful with a good net worth behind me and actually a track record you can see. And as one of the top real estate agents here on the Gulf Coast, you've seen me do that too. So let's get right to it. All right, so from the top, to make money, you must exchange value. Uh, the traditional way of making money is exchange time for money. So when you get in the entrepreneur world, you are trying to exchange value. And at every level, you uh, are trying to solve a problem. The qu quickest way to get rich and to make lots of money is to solve rich people problems. So the evolution of your problem solving has to go or should go or can go from solving a small problem when you're broke to building into solving large problems to get rich. Okay, so if you think about that, this is how the evolution of these ideas can go from concept to actually providing a lot of money for your lifestyle and the where you want to be. Broad concept here, 60% of all the wood that is used in America goes to making logistical pallets, you know, these. And they have to go from point A to point B because everything that really, that goes into these big box stores, Walmart, Lowe's, etc., Home Depot, uh, the hardware store, the ice warehouse, the seafood restaurant, they come on in boxes, they come in logistical pallets, they come on rollers, they come in 50 gallon drums. And all these things that contain the product have to be returned back to wherever they're going or recycled in the system. From 2020 to now, we have seen a massive logistical problem. Remember when all those containers were stacked up offshore for months? And now it's still a problem. We have hyperinflation. This is actually, uh, this is like February 16th of 2023 when this video is made. So at this time, this idea of pallets being a problem is still a problem. So when you think of, we're gonna break off the logistical pallet. The logistical pallet comes in many different types. They are everything from what you see dropping off your stuff at Lowe's to big ones to little ones to intermediates. And you've got to think, okay, when they get to the end place, they're stacked. And today, it's a perfect example on the way home from drop, dropping off Little Jack, I drove by multiple places and probably saw 50 to 100 Logistical pallets just sitting on the side of the road. Perfect example right there. Pallets sitting right there in the side of a Connex. They've been literally sitting there about two weeks. I've been keeping an eye on them just for this video. And that's all over town. You can see them everywhere. Ice house, uh, builders. Go see where they're building like over there. neighborhoods or a new subdivision. Pallets everywhere. Everything comes in on pallets. I see some more right now. Hold on. All right, you see this right here? This is a site where a home builder is about to come in here and build about 60 townhomes in my neighborhood. But if you look over here, see the, the debris, see all the stuff? Now, if you're in the pallet business, all the stuff that builds these houses is gonna come in on pallets somewhere. And then if you wanna elaborate on that, all the 
uh, barrels and the rollers for these power lines that come in here that go this way, all the Romex cables, all the wires, etc., are going to come in on uh, giant spools and they're going to be in the trash pile over here. And here's how you do it. You go and you get in touch with the builder, okay? Whether it's a door, there's DR Horton, and you find out who's contracted to take all that junk away. And that's one of their biggest problems because this is going to be filled up with so much stuff that they're not even going to be able to build the houses because it's just going to be laying everywhere. And if you can solve that problem, you can make money. Whether it's pallets, drums, uh, rollers, anything logistical that needs to be recycled. And if you're in the pickup truck, if you're in the pickup truck business, like Robert Biggerstaff is going to be in here probably with his dump trailers, uh, with every roof that goes on, it, all the scrap needs to go out on a dump trailer. So you got to think about it like that, and you can make some serious money. And you're like, well, how can I make money from pallets? Well, here's how you do it. Most of the time, you can get these things for free. Then you take these bad boys and you find a broker or an intermediary or somebody is willing to exchange them. You might be saying, well, I find these things and what I do. Okay, there's a few different tiers to this and this is part of starting a business. There's the pallet yard, which is gonna probably pay you four or five bucks for the pallet. They're going to try to rip you off because they're gonna broker them too. So think about it like this. There's the person picking it up, and then there's the end user, and then there's the broker. And the pallet yard is kind of like the broker. So what you want to do is you want to create a recurring revenue, a recurring client. You want to go to the small businesses themselves or the businesses themselves and say, hey, I can supply you the pallets, right? Because the pallet yard is only going to probably buy a specific type of pallet from you, the 4840 or whatever. And that is gonna be the hard part of this business. And you gotta figure this out if you want to scale. If you want just some money to pay the light bill, or you like drinking Natty Light, go to the pallet yard, make you a few bucks, just like, just like finding the water heater on the side of the road and chunking it into the scrap yard. Same kind of idea, but you're doing it to the pallet yard, right? And you might have a business where you're a scrapper, you're a pallet guy, whatever you find, you know where you can drop this off and make a dollar. That's kind of the concept too. But what I'm trying to do is expand your mind and how to create a business in this. So if you can find a business that can do it weekly and they will take the pallets you're looking for, the dunnage, and if done, you don't know what dunnage is, uh, I'll put a picture of it right here. It is kind of like the packing or any type of stuff that goes in the container that keeps it solid and straight. Th they might want drums, they might want rollers, they might want all kinds of different things and you become that supplier, especially if you have a place to put this stuff and you wanna say, hey, Sally's Feed Store, I'll get you 15 pallets a week or I will, uh, you know, et cetera. You are trying to find somebody uh, to uh, sell those pallets to 10, 15, 20 bucks a piece. And then you go and find more and you have, you've talked to a network of people saying, hey, I'll get these pallets from you. I'll get them out of your yard. I'll get them out of your hair. I'll get them away from your dumpsters. And then you have somebody to sell them to. I've talked about this idea, uh, uh, before with people that uh, cut down trees and make sawdust and then they charge the person to take the sawdust away and then they have another person that they're selling the sawdust to. This is all part of being an entrepreneur that you know how to make money with whatever opportunity is thrown in front of you. Because remember, you have the supplier, you have the buyer, and then you're, there, there is yourself and you are trying to keep all of these happy. So the, the down and dirty of this, the one through six approach is you need a truck, preferably a flatbed or a big uh, a truck with a large trailer. You need to find the pallets and then you got a network. You got to find the businesses that have the problems. This is the key to it. And you got to find out how to solve them. You got to make sure you don't hold these bad boys. You need to know, okay, which ones need to go to the pallet yard? Which ones can I sell to the other uh, businesses? What size do I need? And can I pick up other things along the way like dunnage, uh, 50 gallon drums, rollers, 
things like that. Let me add here that there's a whole business inside pallet repair, uh, fixing these things and uh, then, then moving them along. There is a business in the using the pallet itself to make all type of woodworking things. People are using them for flooring. I have one as my coffee bar hanging my coffee cups. Just make sure you know the difference of which ones are treated, not treated. Some are made out of juniper. Some are made out of some really interesting wood. Just got to be able to tell the difference on all of them and know what to do with each. You got to study your trade. You got to study your field craft and know everything about pallets and logistical equipment. Just rules of the game. And then once you get the buyer's list, you can decide whether you want to keep continuously picking these things up or do you want to get another guy to pick them up. You find the buyer, you hook them together, you don't move and you make three or four bucks per. Okay. And, and that you want to broker them. And, you know, there's an idea in real estate is you don't want to uh, be out there working on the real estate, you want to write checks and cash checks. And that's kind of the evolution of this idea. There is a man that has an actual course on this that shows how to deep dive into this. I'm going to link it below. I'm going to link his course uh, for all this in, in, the, in the description box. Go down there and look at it. And if you're interested in this type of business, he can show you everything there is to know about this. Everything from uh, cable spools to tanks to uh, 50 gallon drums. I know a guy that paid off his house collecting 50 gallon drums and flipping them and brokering them and it was amazing. There are so many ways to make money in this world. You just have to open your mind up to understand the concept. Perfect example. Uh, you're saying, where can I pay get these from? I was driving home today and I stopped by a developer project. This is a home builder that is about to build 70 houses in my neighborhood. And whether you are a dump trailer guy, a trash guy, a flipper, a scrapper, a pallet guy, whatever, this is like hitting a mega load. And, and if you think about it like this, there's gonna be so much stuff that that builder has to get rid of and so much stuff that's gonna come into that lot. There is going to be a problem and you need to solve that problem. And you say, okay, how can I solve a problem for these? A guy like Robert Biggerstaff with his dump trailers are gonna go in there and he's gonna say, hey roofers, man, I'll get rid of that trash for you. Problem solved. There's gonna be another guy that's gonna go in there and say, hey, all those pallets that all the sheetrock and the plywood and the Romex and the the insulation came on, I will get those pallets from you. I will help you out. There's going to be a guy go in there and he is going to collect all the scrap wood and sell it. There's going to be a guy that's going to go in there or they might just throw it in a big dumpster, right? And then you could be the dumpster guy. Hey, I will make sure you get a hundred dumpsters for all that trash and I will get rid of the dumpsters. Contract, problem solved. You go to the home builder you say, what are going to be your problems that, and how can I solve it? And he'll say, I got a trash problem. You become the trash guy, right? And you figure out how to solve that problem. And if you have the capability to do it and you can prove to that uh, a, a DR Horton or a door or, you know, even the small builders, you can solve that problem. They will be happy to write a contract with you. And this is the evolution of it. You're going from but getting 10 or 15 pallets a day to how can I help DR Horton uh, or Lennar or any of these big companies get rid of all of their product that is discarded? How can we get rid of it and I make a dollar? And that's getting to the next stage. And I, I hope this video helped. I'm trying to show you how to um, broaden your mind to go from I need to feed my family today to how can I be a millionaire in three or four years with this type of idea. I personally know somebody that is in the trash business and they started trash removal uh, in the real estate world. And they, here's how they, this is probably for another video, but they literally started helping people get rid of trash. They went to a, built a dumpster business. Then they got in the wholesale real estate business and not only did they solve the problem of, hey, I can clean the house out, I can also help you get rid of the house or I can, they can get the house themselves, fix it, flip it, 
rent it, whatever they want to do, owner finance it. Perfect business. They saw people get rid of, they have prob, pro, people that have problems of a giant stuff problem, they help them get rid of the stuff. It's brilliant. But I hope you guys like this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you're interested in the course, it's down below. Go talk to him and he will show you how to take this idea to the next level. You need to spend money on education in this world. Uh, you should spend at least three to 5% of your income on education as an entrepreneur because don't let a few thousand bucks keep you from making a hundred thousand bucks. If I think about how much money I've spent in real estate and the entrepreneurial world, and how much a college degree costs, not even comparable. I've spent way more money than that, but it's made me way more money. It's how the world works to keep up. You gotta keep being self-educated because college don't teach these things. See you guys later. Don't forget to like and subscribe on the next video. See you.